In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I make binding for my quilts. And I use a lot of gadgets to help me with making binding. Now, I'm sure many people know how to make binding, so this isn't really a tutorial showing you the basics. What I'm trying to show you is how I make my life a little easier and a little faster when I make binding by using certain pieces of equipment. And that's what I have all out here on my table. Now I'm going to explain how I use each one of these and I'm going to show how, you how I use each one of these little gadgets uh, and devices as I make some binding up. So the first thing I need is some fabric and here it is. Now oftentimes when I make binding I will do the binding using leftover backing fabric. Uh, I find that uh, that usually brings the colors from the back of the quilt to the front of the quilt and uh, it looks very nice when you turn the quilt over and the binding just sort of blends right into your backing but you don't have to do that and I don't always do that it depends on what I'm trying to achieve so this is a piece of backing left over from my last quilt that I made and I'm going to cut it into two and a half inch strips for my binding now to figure out how much binding you need all you need to do is take the width and the height of your quilt, uh, add those two numbers together, and then multiply that by two. And then I always add an extra 10 inches to that. So I've got a little more binding to play with. Um, so that's how I figure out the, the total length of the binding piece. However, with the fabric is usually anywhere from about 42 to 44 inches so you're going to have to figure out how many strips of two and a half inch fabric you're going to need to cut to make up that total uh, length that you just calculated. Now I think that's fairly easy to figure out but now I'm going to show you how I cut it. Now there are many ways to cut your two and a half inch strips. Some people will just do it using a uh, marked ruler and a rotary cutter. Uh, some of us have what's called a stripology ruler, which makes cutting strips very accurate and very easy. But I've gone one step beyond that with a new toy that I purchased uh, recently, and that's my AccuQuilt Go Big machine. And so I do have a two and a half inch die, which is right here. And this will cut me three strips two and a half inch strips uh, in no time at all. And of course, well, I'm gonna show you how that works. So just hold on for a second. Okay, so I have my two and a half inch die. Now some people do like to make their strips for their binding two and a quarter inches. Um, I prefer two and a half inch, that's just me. It's really up to you. So we need to get our fabric on here. So here's is my leftover fabric, as I was saying, from my last quilt. And uh, I do have, this is doubled over. So one piece of this this way, because this is wide back fabric, is about, let me just measure it here, is about 34 inches. So basically with the fold, double that, there's 68 inch strip. I can get a 68 inch strip out of this. So I could do the math and figure out how much I need for my quilt. But since I'm just demonstrating how to do a binding, I'm not going to worry about that. So to get it to fit on my die, I've just folded it in half again. So I have two folds here. And you can play around with uh, cutting it on the straight of grain which would be parallel to your salvage piece. And that's this piece right here. And that's what I'm going to do because that means less fraying. And I do have some excess here, so I'm just going to cut that off. And I'm not being very accurate in my cutting in terms of making it straight. I could, but I don't need to because I'm going to die cut it. Throw that piece over there center this back on here so that I can get one, two, three strips out of this one piece with one cut. I need to put my cutting mat on top of the die. The machine is on and I'm just going to feed it through.
Okay, turn the machine off. Slide that. And now I'm just taking off the scrap pieces. And now I have three two and a half inch strips of fabric that measure. What did I say? About 68 inches a piece. Just like that. Now, I need to sew these together, so I'll come back and show you how I do that. Okay, so I have one of my strips laid out, and I've got right side up. I'm going to take my second strip and put it on top with face uh, right side down. Or in other words, I'm matching up the right sides. So I've put it aligning the top edge up with the top edge of this piece and then the edge with this edge. Now, these may not be square, and if they're not square, don't worry. You don't have to line them up. You can just cross them, and you'll be able to cut off the excess later. So you don't need to get too upset if your ends are not square. But mine are. Now, I need another tool, and that's my wonder clips and I love wonder clips you could pin this but I like the wonder clips better so I'm putting in enough here to hold it secure and now I'm going to mark a diagonal line using a pencil and a ruler and you could use whatever marking device works for you and it also will depend upon the color of the fabric in this case it's very light so I'll be able to see a pencil mark fine and I want to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Now I have found the easiest way is just to peek underneath my top strip, see where the corner of the bottom strip is, put the point of my pencil there, and then just press my ruler lightly up against the point of the pencil and put the other end right along the point at the top and draw my line. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along that straight line and I'll come back and show you what the next stage is. So now I have sewn along my pencil line. I will remove my wonder clips and I want to cut off this point a quarter inch away from the sewn line. So it gives me a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just lining up my ruler with a quarter inch mark on it. I'm taking my rotary cutter and I'm just slicing off that point. Now we want to press this seam open. Now you could press it to one side or the other, but I like to do it uh, open because it creates less bulk in my binding. So I'm going to take this over to my pressing mat and do that. I don't need to really show you that on camera because I think we all know how to press seams open, but I'm going to show you a handy little tool I like to use because I find that sometimes it's hard to get these apart with your fingers. So I get them started, but this is a Hera uh, marker. Very handy tool if you don't own one. They're not that expensive and they're great for marking on your fabric. And I just use that to pry this open and to sort of flatten it down. And now I can easily just take my iron and press that open. And so that's what I'm going to do now, and I'll be back. So I have my seam pressed flat, and I would do that same procedure to add all my strips to each other until I have one long continuous piece of fabric. Now we need to fold it in half and press it. And this part can be somewhat tedious. And what we usually do is we put it out here. Hope you can see this and take it, fold it in half, give it a little bit of a finger press, and then take a hot iron and just press along. And we have to do that for the entire length of our piece of binding. But I have found a tool that makes this a little bit easier, and it's this little blue 
3D printed device. This comes from a company called, and I'll try to remember to put it in the show notes below. It's called the Third Hand Binding Folder Clip. And essentially, it just clamps to the end of your table. You pull the binding through and it folds it for you. Um, it's called Purple hobbies.com is the name of the website where I bought it. It was very inexpensive. And as I said, I think this company just 3D prints these parts. Now I've had some problems with it. So I've added a few enhancements to this little device. What it does is it clamps to the end of your table like that. But I find it's on my surfaces, it tends to slide apart or slide off. So even though it's got this little clamp right here, that allows you to adjust it up and down. I hope find it doesn't hold. Sorry, I got it out of the shot. There's this little clamp right under here, little wing nut. I find it doesn't hold all that well. So what I've done is I've added a piece of actually fine grain sandpaper. I glued it to the top of this. And I probably should do the same with this bottom because right now I'm using a little cork uh, pad, this type of thing you'd use on the bottom of say a stool leg or chair leg. Um, that works, but I think the sandpaper works a little better. For my setup, you'll have to play with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to the end here. So I just slide my stuff out a little bit from my table. And excuse me, you're going to see my back for a second. There we go. And now I'm just going to adjust my camera. It's a little awkward, the position of my camera for this. I'll loosen off the clamp all the way. And I just put it on here and I just tighten up this little wing nut and there. Now it's not all that steady, I find. Um, it depends on the surface you're going to put it on. Now I've started pressing this and you'll want to do that. First couple of inches is press folded over in the usual way and then you slide it in to this device. And this can be a little tedious at the beginning depending on how stiff your fabric is and this fabric is not very stiff although I have found that if you give it a little hit of spray starch it works fine but some fabrics are better than others okay I'm having a little problem here just bear with me for a second it always figures when you're on camera right things don't cooperate with me and I'm also in an awkward position. So you just slide it up. And if you have to, you can put a little pin in here and just pull it through. And you just pull it through. Now you want to be careful as you're pulling it through because sometimes, especially when it hits one of the join pieces, I'm sorry, my back is there, it will fold over on itself. Okay, so it comes out like that. You just take your iron. And away you go. And I'm probably out of the shot right now, right now, right? But you know how this works. You've ironed binding before, I'm sure. So you just pull it through again. Oops, see, this is what I mean. It might do that. So you got to kind of guide it. Okay, there we are. And you just carry on doing that. Now I find that once you get the hang of how to use this little simple little device, it works very well. If you're really good at this, and I'm not, you can put your iron down here at this one end. Sorry, I'm in the way again. And just keep pulling it through and under your iron. Now this will mount onto any surface, as I said. It mounts really well on the end of an ironing board. But it's a little less tedious than what you usually do. And you see, once you get going, it doesn't take any time at all. Now I'm not going to do a huge long piece, but I have about 130 inches here, just from those two pieces. 
And we're just about done. And I'm doing this on a wool pressing mat. I love the wool pressing mat. You've heard me talk about it before. Because it really, especially on something like this, it really allows you to get a nice crisp fold. Just because of the way the pressing mat retains the steam. Okay, so now my binding's all done. I have a lot of it. And now what I used to do was I'd put it on my hand and I'd roll it up so it's easier to work with. But I have a toy for this as well, which I'm going to show you in just a second. Now, I don't know if you've seen one of these before or not. I saw one of these on Mr. Domestic way back a couple of, well, a couple, three years ago or so, back pre-COVID when I first got into quilting. And I thought this was a great device. So I ordered one. In fact, I got two of them. Um, don't ask me how I ended up with two, but I did. So... What is this thing? Well, it is called a Easy Binding Winder. And I will put uh, their website uh, in the show notes below for this device as well. And what you do with this is you just mount it to the side of your table or in the case of uh, an ironing board, you can put it on it. The clamping system on it could be a little better but it, it works pretty well for my purposes. And you just pull that up. So there it is. Let me see if I can pull you back a bit so you can see it a little better. And this handle comes out and this comes off, a little coil in here, and there's a little clip right here. So all you do is put this back together, just slides right down in here. The handle goes in. There are markings on the cylinder inside, so you get the, see it's on one edge, it's a little flat, and the other edge it's a little round, so you gotta line that up. And usually it doesn't take me this long to do this, but it's because I've got the camera in an awkward position. Okay, let's get this. <laughs> All right, let me see what I'm doing here. Okay, this is the way I wanna go. Okay, there. That's just in there. Little clip inside here is on the top. I take my binding. Now, I don't know if you can see this, if I can make this any better for you. Well, just trust me on it. I'm just putting this underneath that little clip that's on the cylinder. And I just crank it. And this rolls up your piece of binding in no time flat and keeps everything neat. Okay, got it on there. I'm going to take it out. Now, I have two things. I'm just going to move this out of our way. See, I've got the little cylinder on the inside. It's all rolled up. And I have a choice here. I can leave it rolled up on this or I can take it off. It's very easy to slide it right out and put a clip on it. And if I'm making binding in advance for things, I just put a big clip on it and put it somewhere where I know I can find it and it's all ready to go. So it's that easy. The other thing I find very handy is a little blue basket. This came from the dollar store. And what I do is I will put my binding in this basket and put it down at the feet, at my feet, of my sewing machine and it'll just unroll from that. Now, do I need to put it in a basket? Probably not, but what I have found is as I'm pulling on binding, I often get it tangled up with my feet or with my foot pedal. This just keeps it neatly organized. Just a little uh, tip. I'll even tell you this. These baskets have this little hole here. I found if I put it through that little hole, it also helped with the feeding process through it. So, yeah. So let me just turn the camera around uh, for a moment as I finish up. So that's how I make my binding. I find these gadgets really help me do a very fast job of making binding because binding can be tedious to make. It's not hard, it's just tedious. And my Accu quilt makes short work of cutting the fabric strips that I need. The uh, Hera tool 
uh, is very handy in opening up my seams because let's face it, opening up seams for pressing is not as easy as just pressing to one side. So this just makes that a little bit easier. The binding tool for this, uh, what did I call that? That's the third hand binding folder clip. That's a mouthful. Works really well for doubling your uh, your binding over and the easy binding binder binding winder why are why is language so difficult today i don't know again makes it all neat into a nice little coil ready to go so i hope you found this uh useful it isn't anything astounding everybody makes binding everybody knows how to make binding but this is how i make it a little bit faster and if it's faster, I find it a little bit more enjoyable to do a job that I find somewhat tedious. So thanks for joining me today for this short little tutorial, and we'll see you again on the next one. Bye for now.